Oh, oh, TV. They scared, but I'm not. They don't like commentario. Y suscribe. Bochinche alert. But, Precious the True apparently is in Miami. I'll be there hanging out, ready to meet you. Precious the True is raising funds at Raising Canes, pulling up to Miami for a good call on a Thursday. If you are in the Miami area, I'm inviting you to join me at the Raising Canes Dural location tomorrow afternoon for a special event of my nonprofit organization, What If Unlimited. When you mention our fundraiser at the register tomorrow, Canes will donate 15% of all sales to What If Unlimited. I'll be there hanging out, ready to meet you. We're going to have a lot of giveaways. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you. See you there. Hey, what's up, guys? That was the worst. Pro- that was the worst promotion I ever seen. Big shout out, Precious man. Come on, man. You gotta wake up, brother, when you trying to promote something, man. That's what happens when you try when a, when a dude from the Bronx tries to keep a professional. You are lying, Precious. We know about you from the BX. Man, get out of here. We don't believe you at all. But I thought he went to school in Miami. He went to school in in Memphis. And we forget, Precious Achua was drafted by the Miami Heat, so there are some ties there. So they brought him to the league. He was drafted 20th overall, 20th pick overall. So that, he's you know, a first rounder. I think there's something to <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Gregory James, no BS. I was thinking that 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 footage looked like they was holding them hostage. <laughs> 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 yo, yo, that's a fact. A thousand percent, a thousand, a thousand percent. And the Miami Heat might be holding them hostage there because I think the Miami Heat. I think that I've heard players sometimes say when somebody drafts you, a team drafts you sometimes, unless you break up in an explosive way or you get left with a bad taste in your mouth, then there's no reason to go back. I never hear them try, wanting to go back to, to their team. But the Miami Heat treat their guys right. I haven't heard – we haven't heard anything about Precious and Chua not wanting to work. So he would probably fit the Miami Heat culture. That center they have. Oh my! I don't, have you seen where? No. In Miami. Yo, Lenzel tried to give me a nightmare yesterday, bro. He said, "Yo, that kid that that the Miami he have, he's seven feet and can shoot threes forty percent." I'm like, he ain't that good. We started watching highlights. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. This guy's legit, bro. I mean, it's summer league, but he did a lot of it in college, and now he, he looks great. So you know, Miami's always with them sneaky picks. This guy's a first rounder. He looks legit, bro. So Miami's trying to do their thing. I can see them adding a true there. No problem. Why not? Why not take a chance on them? What else do you guys have to offer? You have Jimmy Butler there making a hundred billion dollars. Twenty nine. Salute to salute. Good morning, James. Salute to the guys. Chill, Will. What's going on? If we can pull off getting Capella without losing Mitch or Deuce or any rotation players, I could be on board. I just think we, we don't when you when we're trying to make deals without giving up money or trying to match nowadays, you know, it's it's going to be harder to do that. Let's give Randall this this season at least. I, I'm willing to go longer than that. Me personally, I just don't. We got to see him in the playoffs and more pressure moments, and that's what we all look forward to with, with Randall. The big games. Crunch time. But I don't care if we're playing against the Atlanta Hawks or, or you know, the lowly Detroit Pistons. It's this crunch time. I want to see what you do. The only game when they shot, I remember Randall hitting, was against the Miami Heat on the corner right there, damn in the corner on the wing. Yeah. And he was fumbling and bumbling the ball. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't really he created it. And every other time, he looks, you know, he gets very, he's not emotionally together. So that's what I want to see. Use every one of those games as a moment, as practice. Or oh, hold on, we're going to be doing this in the playoffs. Don't worry about everything else. Stop thinking about anybody else. Worry about the best that you can do, and that's it. But I definitely want to give them to this season because, bro, Bridges in one corner, OG in the other corner, Brunson on the court with you, DiVincenzo on the court with you. There's going to be no excuses for you. It's just we got to be honest about that. But go operate. Go do your thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I agree. Like I said, you know, I've been saying that we owe Randall this season. Um, but you know, I would give him the extension. I'm not gonna even lie. You know, um, 
when you played that clip of what Garnett was saying, it just made sense. Mm. It made sense, you know. Got to put my, you know, like I said, I'm not, I'm not in love with Ren Pauls. I'm not in love with Tibbs, but you know, I, I you know, you got to love them for who they are. Randall was a solid player. He's top five power forwards in the league. You can't name five power forwards better than him. You just can't. So to have that double double, all star. So nah, man. Um, we definitely ought for him this season, and I definitely want to see us in the playoffs healthy. Everybody healthy, and to me, that's the test. The test is getting in the playoffs. Everybody healthy. Okay, now let bring it home. Bring it home. Only team that we should be worried about that we should lose to with fully healthy is the Boston Celtics, which I still take us. But nobody else should be able to beat us in the East fully healthy. Speaking of uh, Julius Randle. I forgot to add this to uh, to our uh, our screen. It was just on cue. You guys happened to be speaking about him, and they spoke about him here on SNY. Let me see if I can fast see if I can fast forward to, to go it. Inside. Yeah, John. Right now, I don't think that's at the forefront for either the Knicks or Randall. Uh, and so, you know, here we are, a couple weeks out. Uh, that tells you a little bit. But I think with Randall, I know he is very excited to get back healthy and get back with this group. I was told that his rehab on that injured shoulder is going really well, and so they feel like he's in a good place there and i think he looks at this roster right now and he thinks they could nick could do something special uh with mikhail bridges added so he's just really excited obviously we know he loves new york we know he wants to win badly in this city so i think that's where his mindset is but as far as the extension goes yeah not at the top of mind for the Knicks, not at the top of mind for Randall. I think with Randall, he knows that the Knicks need a backup big to fill out this roster. And I think that's where uh, he'd like the focus to be at this moment. I think. And again, if you couldn't hear that, Ian Bailey was basically saying the, the Knicks are looking for a backup center and Julius Randall seems to be in line step by step with, hey, don't worry about my contract right now. We got other worries. We got other concerns to fill out this roster to become a championship style roster. And it goes back to us having to give more credit to Julius Randle. I'm definitely one, one of the leaders of, of kicking him while he was down and, and definitely heavily critiquing him when I, when I didn't see what I, what, what I didn't like, when I saw what I didn't like. And in the midst of all that, I always gave Carmelo and Julius Randle their props for wanting to come to New York. But at the same time, maybe my, he my criticism was so heavy that I do forget, hey, before Brunson turned down that money, Randall turned down that money. And then again, he's doing it again. Right now, he's saying, forget about my money right now. Go get somebody that makes our job easier, not just mine, all of us. Because if it's a backup big that we need, remember, we just, we just watched the playoffs. Mitchell couldn't make it all the way. You know, Hartenstein he couldn't perform, and he's missing now. I'm, I'm gonna, I got hurt last year. Let's, be, let's keep it official. So... That's music to my ears, all boy. What, what do you think about Julius Randle being able to uh, to just walk step by step with the Knicks and sound like how we want him to sound? Well, I mean, I, I, I think on both parts, you know, the Knicks and Randle, I think they both be patient and they, you know, making small moves. Remember, I think Randle is going to try to get, which he should, get the most money he could. And I think, you know, on the next end, we just want to make sure that, you know, we making the right decision. Because he's definitely good and great trade bait. I know it sounds messed up, but, you know, I think both parties are being very cautious. And remember, I've been saying it. This is his audition this season. We see what we look like without him. That's the bad thing when players get injured. You see what the team looks like. And if they look great, it's like, oh, hold up. So, you know, but I don't know, man. I don't, it's a tricky situation. It's tricky. It's tricky. And I can't wait for the season to start to see, you know, how he's going to respond from that uh, shoulder injury. Is he going to get back to all-star level, double-double guy? 
you know. Um, but from our end, we be we being very cautious, very cautious. And I understand, I really do. I think the caution feels like it's more about the money and the cap situation. Because if there's no salary cap, like imagine a world where there's no salary cap. We sign everybody for two hundred million dollars and just keeping the team together. Because you know James Dolan will be like, "Oh, bro, here you go. Just pop my channel off, man. I really don't care what it is. You know, like I really don't care about what we got to do to keep you guys here. I like you guys. These are, these are young. Randall doesn't get in trouble. I've never seen Randall in trouble. I've never heard anything about him. Just on the court, he looks kind of crazy. Well, outside of that, same thing with Russell Westbrook. We don't hear about Russell Westbrook getting in trouble. Yeah, they're crazy on the court, but they're good guys. So I, I think the cautiousness has to do with, or the caution has to do with the Knicks just saying, yo, we can't, we can't just sign anybody to whatever deal. We have, there's a cap in place, and in four years out, this is what it looks like, and whatever, whatever, whatever. And the fact that they're working lock and step together, you know, Tibbs, I've heard already t uh, several times, Tibbs and James Dolan love Randall and they're showing them a lot of loyalty, going back to what we said about 50 and Eminem. For them to, for those to be public statements like that, I don't think that's an accident. I think trading him is a lot harder than we think, um, than we can ever think. Because if the owner has that love for you and the coach has that love for you, even if Leon Rose said this is the best, this is the best thing we could do, they might look at him and be like, I don't care what you say. This guy came here when nobody wanted to come here. This guy dealt with all of booing. None of these guys, none of these kids, Brunson, Hart, DiVincenzo, none of them dealt with the worst of this crowd. He did. He did that. He took on all the, all the bullets for everybody right now. And that means something to them. That's the hu human side. That should it affect the business side? I would think not. But this is why we're humans. Why is that? The, this is what the game is. When somebody presents that to you, you gotta look at it and be like, "Nah, hold on a second. You can't just trade that guy." And as fans, look how we feel about him now. Oh, oh boy. imagine how, imagine us feeling this way about Julius Randle two years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, that never would have happened. So the yeah. fact that he won us over, that's beyond the victory. Yeah, but at the same time, it's still business. Um, and you know that saying, you know, you can't you know think with your heart, not your head, or vice versa. I forget how it goes. And no matter how much you love a person, you know, you always you still have to do what's best for you. You know, and I'm not saying Randall's not best for us, but I'm just saying if a scenario comes up where it's, you know we can win a championship, moves will have to be made. But you know, I'm, I'm all for Randall staying here with us. Like I said, I'm going to keep repeating it. Kevin Garnett said it perfect. And who else but a guy like that who understands? It's like the same situation in Boston. The same situation. I'm not saying, you know, we have a Garnett or Paul Pierce or Ray Allen. But I'm just saying, Garnett understands going somewhere and wanting to win. Oh, oh, boy, TV. They scared, but I'm not. They don't like commentario. Y suscribe.